Welcome to this, our first session of a course where we will discuss fake news, misinformation, disinformation. We'll begin by talking about the Islamic uh, perspective on these matters, and then we will go into much more detail discussing how exactly we can protect ourselves from falling prey to misinformation and fake news, how we can ensure that our knowledge and our sources are, are reliable and trustworthy, how we can prevent spreading, you know, harmful misinformation, things about, you know, uh, on a variety of different topics. I'll begin in this first session talking about things that are related to, to, to the deen, to matters of aqidah, to matters of fiqh, and then uh, over the next few weeks, inshallah ta'ala, we will be discussing matters that are more general. So what are the kinds of news sources that you need to be that you need to be looking out for? What you need to be to watch out for? We will talk about the power of social media to influence our decisions. We'll talk about, you know, those kinds of things. And then by the end of this, inshallah ta'ala, I, I hope that you will be better armed and better prepared for dealing with the the torrent and you know just the, the flood of information that comes your way every single day you'll have better tools that will enable you to differentiate between that which you can trust and that which you can rely on and that which is uh, you know which is uh, unreliable untrustworthy uh, that which is harmful and we'll talk about that today as well inshallah ta'ala because we'll end our discussion today talking about hate speech and also propaganda and how harmful that can be. So let us begin our discussion ta'ala. The first thing that I want to tell you about is the story of this course. Um, a few years ago, my mother-in-law bought me a gift. The book was called The Organized Mind by Daniel Levitin, who's an American author. And it's about thinking straight in the age of information overload, right? So I read part of the book, and uh, but then I was I was struck by something that he mentioned, he says that he has another book, and that book is called Weaponized Lies, How to Think Critically in the Post-Truth Era. Same author, he is um, a neuroscientist, if I'm not mistaken, or a psychologist, I forget his actual, you know, uh, qualification, but these two books are dealing with how to think critically, how to be able to differentiate between what is reliable, what isn't. Every day you hear things like statistics, 64% of all Malaysian uh, or South African or, you know, American adults are vaccinated or they are not. You know, so every day you hear things like this. Uh, one third of the population believes such and such. So you hear facts and you hear, you hear figures every day, but to be able to know what you can rely on and what you can't and understanding how this is being used as a means of fooling you, of convincing you, of persuading you, causing you to adopt for certain positions and take certain actions. This is a very important skill set to have in the, in, you know, in our age where we are, mashallah, very advanced technologically in terms of the way we communicate. And like uh, one person said that we have the knowledge of mankind in our hands, literally in our hands. Or what do we use it for? We use it for, for taking selfies and uh, you know, using face swap and uh, sharing memes. We, we, can, you know, we can change the world at the, our fingertips with knowledge of mankind. That's so true, subhanAllah. Just think about this from the perspective of a Muslim. You have the Quran, you have the Sunnah, you have the books of Tafsir, you have the books of Hadith, you have the books of Arabic and Usul al Fiqh, and you have all of this in, on one device, thousands and thousands of books. But are we doing it, are we using it to do research, to read, to educate ourselves about the deen? What are we using our mobile devices for? And our laptops and our tablets. So think about this deeply. I will discuss this as an exercise later, inshallah ta'ala. So that got me thinking. Now, these two books are books that I read recently, the last few years. But when we were studying at the Islamic University of Medina, I went to Kulliyatul Hadith, the faculty of Hadith. And in the third year, we have a subject called al wadu wal wadda'un Basically, hadith fabrication and those who fabricate them. All right, so those who fabricate them. So the subject, we have one year dedicated, two or three times a week. We have the subject, and we were studying a book that was written by Sheikh Umar Falata, 
who uh, did a three volume thesis on this topic at the University of Al Azhar. So that was our primary reading material, but our teacher had his own notes, sort of a distilled version of those three volumes. So over the course of that year, we studied what fabrication is. What are lies against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What does it mean to manufacture a lie against the Messenger of Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then the person fabricates something, which the Prophet never said, which never came out of his mouth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When did this start? Very important question. Why did people fabricate against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Now, the, 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 the connect between that and this is that the scholars of Hadith have a number of very, very important principles and tools that they use to verify the Sunnah, which I will discuss with you later. But those the say, if someone can lie against the Messenger of Allah, do you think that's, that, that that person won't lie in other, in, 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 in other aspects of his or her life? It's a definite possibility. Person wants to sell this, uh, you know, sell this product. They will lie to you about its effectiveness. If a person is willing to lie against the messenger of Allah as a Muslim, forget about the kuffar and those who, uh, you know, those who are enemies of Islam. They lie against the Prophet every single day. They say things about him that aren't true. They distort the truth about him. But I'm talking about a Muslim. If a Muslim says the Prophet says, and he knows that the Prophet never said that. Um, then, of course, him lying in other matters would be even easier. So that's what interested me in this in this topic. And um, inshallah ta'ala, at the end of the course, I'll give you some other resources that you can use to further your studies. And I hope inshallah ta'ala that it will be beneficial. So we are obviously, you know, we are bombarded. We are surrounded by different, you know, types of information. There's, uh, you know, just... Uh, uh, social interactions, we have social media, we have websites, we have po popular culture, movies, TV shows, novels, just a flood of information. And being able to firstly prioritize what it is that you want to learn, what it is that you want to know, then once you've identified what it is you want to know, to ensure that you're getting it from the right sources. I mean, you don't, you don't want to, if I told you that the food that you were eating is tainted, that it is harmful, you'd stop eating it, wouldn't you? If I told you it's contaminated, if I told you that it had, um, you know, a bacteria, a harmful bacteria, or that it was tainted with poisonous chemicals, you wouldn't eat it. You'd be more, you'd be more careful. You'd want to source the right types of food. So when, why is it that when it comes to your cultural, you know, nourishment, your intellectual nourishment, you're not as uh, discerning? So you need to be discerning when it comes to your information and your knowledge as you are discerning about what you put in your body. So we hope, inshallah ta'ala, that this is how this is this course will help us to achieve that. What are our course objectives? We want to learn how to think critically and we want to understand that from an Islamic point of view, thinking critically and using our minds and our reason that Allah has bestowed upon us, that this is something encouraged by the Sharia. All right. We want to be able to identify misinformation and lies and, and uh, fake news. We want to be able to make that distinction because if you ask a scholar of hadith, what is the definition of the hadith sciences of mustalahul hadith or ulumul hadith or usulul hadith, all names for the same topic? Why do I need to study sahih and hasan and da'if and mursal and, and munqati' and you know, all of these different categories? The definition of it is, uh, it would be al-qawaid, the ma'rifat al-qawaid al-lati, those knowledge of the principles through which you would distinguish between what is authentic and what isn't of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's that's the definition. So everything that you study in the the sciences of hadith is to achieve this objective. The main objective of studying hadith. Uh, hadith sciences is to be able to differentiate between what the prophet said and did and what the prophet did not say and do but people have attributed to him all right then we also want to learn how to make informed decisions so uh, for instance studies have shown you hear this all the time in a study that was done at the university of wisconsin now first and foremost it's something that affects you your mother or father is ill Studies have been done on the disease that your parents are, are, are sick with. You want to know whether that medi medication or treatment would be good for you. You need to make an informed decision. 
So knowing that that information is correct and reliable, that the study itself was done properly, that's going to be important. You want to know, for instance, as, from, as a Muslim, whether or not you should fast only, whether, is it okay for me to fast only on a Friday? I'm going to single Friday out with fasting. So you want to know that the hadith about that topic is authentic, that the Prophet prohibited a singling out of a Friday for fasting, or a Thursday night, all right, the night before Friday for ibadah and qiyamul layl. Don't specify a night. If you're going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship Allah regularly, not uh, you know, choosing days or nights that you yourself want to worship Allah on, thinking of them as we, as I grew up believing that Thursday nights are especially important for ibadah. And we would congregate, uh, come together as family and as neighbors, and we would engage in loud congregational dhikr, you know, uh, for because why not the rest of the week? Why a Thursday night? Because there was this belief that a Thursday night was extra, extra special. And it's something which the Prophet discouraged, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whether it's a decision about something you want to buy, uh, surgery or medication that you want to take for yourself or for others, whether it is a school you want to go to, being able to make informed decisions is, is very important. And the first step is making sure that you have reliable knowledge and information. Also, you want to be able to avoid the pitfalls of the information age that we are living in. So um, knowing how you can be manipulated and how you are being manipulated is a very powerful thing. So that's already just knowing that you are being manipulated is already the first is, is, is great. Then how to avoid being manipulated into buying things and making decisions that you wouldn't ordinarily do if you had the time to think and to sift through the information. That's, uh, that, that is also very beneficial. Okay, so then lastly, being able to identify reliable sources of information. I'll try my very best to ensure that you have, I won't tell you what you should listen to. I, don't, I won't tell you what podcasts and what uh, websites and news and, and individuals you need to listen to. I hope to give you principles that you can use and certain ways of ensuring that the knowledge that you that you are consuming and the information you are consuming is reliable, inshallah. I can't promise that it will be infallible. No, nothing is if it's a human endeavor, but I'll do my best to make sure that you have the necessary tools and resources to be able to make those judgments. Okay, so now that we know what we want to achieve, we make dua before we continue. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to achieve the, uh, these objectives and uh, to give us not only the ability to achieve these objectives, but to give us even more than that, right? To allow us to be able to, um, to, to benefit even, even in, in, in better ways than the ones that I've listed. All right, now let's begin by talking about the fact that Islam encourages thinking, consideration, understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of the day, of the night and the day, are signs for those of understanding. Those people that have, that have intellect, they are the ones that when they look at the creation of the heavens and the earth, the alternation of night and day, they see in, the, in that signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence, his power, his knowledge, his wisdom. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who have understanding. And in other ayat, obviously, I could, we could go through a number of ayat in which Allah talks about the aql. لَعَلَّكُمْ يَعْقِلُونَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَعْقِلُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Right? Uh, for instance, لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُ مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ The people of Jahannam, they would say that if only we had listened or heard or we had used our intellect, we would not be of the companions of the fire. But I'm going to give you this reference now, insha'Allah ta'ala. This is, I have not given you the reference and I'm going to make double, doubly sure that we are on the right place, insha'Allah ta'ala. So I'm assuming that this is ayah number 190 of Surah Al-Baqarah, but no, it's not. So let us make sure that it is the, what is the right reference. Now, Surah Ali Imran, now. 
Let me write that down for you. I normally have those references here on the slide, but it seems I don't in this case. So this is Ali Imran, and it will be ayah number 190 of that surah. Now, of course, there are many other ayat that we could use, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, he praises, he's, he's, this is in the form of praise for those who think, those who try to understand, those who pay attention to the world around them. So that's very, very important. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah, so we're not, we're not finished and the other reference is there, so um, an oversight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقَتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ So in ayah number 190, 191 of Surah Ali Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those of understanding. And then in this ayah, 191, Allah says, those who remember Allah while sitting, standing, sitting, or lying on their sides, and they give thought, ah, they, they, that's the, the operative word. They give thought to the creation of the heavens and the earth. So they think. They're not just sitting and saying, ah, subhanAllah, beautiful. That's, a, that's not thinking about it. Thinking about it is asking, who cre how did that come about? The, the sun and the moon and the sky and the alternation of the day and the night and the mountains and the oceans and the fact that earth is in a particular in a particular orbit in relation to the sun or that the sun and the entire solar system is in a particular orbit in relation to the rest of the galaxy and so on and so forth so you're thinking you're thinking about origins you're thinking about um, details and complexity and diversity all of these questions are coming to mind and you're giving it you know serious thought so then they, after they've done that, they give, they, they ask the following and they make dua. Oh, our Lord, you did not create this aimlessly. So after thinking about it and considering what they, what they see around them, they say, oh, Allah, you did not create this aimlessly. Exalted are you above such a thing to do any for that. You, any of your actions are done without uh, goals and objectives. Then protect us from the fire from the punishment of the fire. This is the dua of those of understanding and those who think. So, alhamdulillah, we now have, we now have that, that understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who, who think and understand, and therefore those are qualities of the, of, the, of the believers. It's something that a Muslim aspires to, to be able to think and to consider and to um, ask questions. That is a quality of the believer. Now, Another aspect or another quality of the believers is that they verify, right? They verify and they investigate. So those are two words, investigation and verification. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in ayah number six of Surah Al-Hujurat. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu in jaakum fasiqum binabayin fatabayyanu fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bijahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimeen Oh you who have believed. So Allah is addressing the believers directly. If there comes to you a disobedient one, a fasiq, someone who is unreliable, someone who, you know, who is known to be untrustworthy, that person comes to you with a naba, with information, then you should investigate. In another qira'ah of this ayah, فَتَثَبَّتُوا So, verify and investigate. Clarify, ask questions, have, you know, um, have testimony provided, um, have collaborating evidence. Don't make rash decisions. Now, this ayah is going to have direct bearing on many of the things that we'll talk about. One of the things that we'll discuss is the importance of not sharing unverified information. Something comes to you on WhatsApp, something comes to you on Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or any one of the thousands of, of different apps out there. Do not share that with anyone until you have verified that it is authentic. Don't share it and say, what do you guys think about this? You know, uh, have you heard about this? No. You need to make sure that the burden now is upon you. You are now at a, at a position of responsibility and accountability. 
because you you can be the node in the in 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 the transmission of this information where it stops if you if you take the time to verify and find that it is false you can then return it to the person who sent it to you and say and say to that person i'm sorry to i'm sorry to tell you but this is this is false this is not correct or this has been doctored or this picture was a picture taken in in, in 2016 this is not a picture from riots in south africa or this is from 20 2009 not 2021 so don't um, you know don't share something if you don't know if it's true or not someone shared with me last year a video very professional video of russia attacking nato targets in eastern europe i think it was in uh, in poland and in um, uh, what other bordering country is there? I forget now. Czech, uh, the Czech Republic or Czechia, as they call themselves now. But the point is that I was shocked. I thought, wow, subhanAllah, this is World War Three. And so I looked at the video professionally done. They have the reporter. They have the BBC, you know, background, everything. Very professional. They've got the, you know, those, those running lines at the bottom of, I don't, know, I don't know what it's called, at the bottom of the screen. Wallahi, professionally done. What did I do? I went online, I went to the BBC website, nothing. I went to Al Jazeera, nothing. I went to The Guardian, nothing. Okay, I checked and I wanted to know, I just typed in Russia attacks NATO targets, nothing. So that meant that that was a perfectly doctored video showing NATO being attacked by Russia and the potential for World War III beginning was there, but it was completely false. It was it was it, it was a it was a complete lie right with no basis in reality so if you you need to verify and so i re i replied to the person who sent it to me and i said listen this is not true there's no there's no other corroborating evidence for this okay and then the person you know was 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 aware of this so you need to make sure that if you share something make sure that it's authentic whether it's a make sure that if it's an ayah from the quran it's the right reference the other day uh, my students and i we were reading from a book and it was uh, in Arabic. And then we found out that the ayah reference was the incorrect ayah reference. It was the right surah, but the wrong ayah number. So that's the level of detail. And don't be, don't, you know, don't say to yourself, ah, but, you know, Tariq, that's a lot of work. I've got to check all of these things. No, shouldn't it be the response? No, I'm only saying to you that if you are going to pass it on to another person, you need to verify. Not that you need to check everything that comes to you. You only need to check if you are going to send that to someone else. Okay, so I hope that's clear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So this ayah makes it very clear that you and I as Muslims need to verify and authenticate information, especially when it comes to the matters of the deen. And then when it's in other matters, there's also a level of responsibility there as well. Why? Because lest you harm a people out of ignorance, and become over what you have done regretful. What is the reason this ayah was revealed? The Prophet had sent one of the companions to collect zakah from a certain tribe. He feared that that tribe would attack him. Now, that was just a fear that he had. So he came back and told the Prophet ﷺ that they had threatened to kill him. So the Prophet ﷺ was, of, of course, upset at this development. Then he, um, he gathered a small contingent of Sahaba with the intention of marching on this tribe so that he could address this issue. So the Prophet was ready to go to war with these people because the Prophet felt on the basis of this man's information that these people were going to attack a messenger and a representative of the Prophet ﷺ. Think about this from our perspective. If the Malaysian government sends a representative to Singapore and a rumor reaches them that, that he's been arrested or that he's been executed in Singapore, I'm pretty sure that there will be people in the Malaysian government that will be calling for military force to be used against Singapore in retaliation for those actions. Yes. But of course, the Malaysian government is first going to ascertain that that information is correct. They'll, you'll have the prime minister of Malaysia contacting the prime minister of Singapore or the foreign minister uh, contacting the foreign minister. Excuse me. You know, good morning. Uh, you know, we, we, we are hearing reports. They might first and foremost, they'll contact that diplomat. Listen, are you OK? We've heard something. Oh, no, I'm fine. I mean, I'm at the I'm at the hotel. Oh, then it's a rumor, it's false news, it's fake news. So they'll go through those levels of verification. Uh, Malaysia won't launch a military attack on Singapore on the basis of hearsay and rumor. 
because there are obviously consequences. And so that's what you and I need to realize, that spreading and sharing false information has consequences and people can be harmed. Relationships can be harmed. You know, um, uh, people can go to, can, 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 um, uh, can fight, can get into physical fights based on misinformation. People can go to war based on misinformation. People lose their jobs based on, on lies and misinformation. So there's a lot of ways in which um, rumor and, and, and um, slander and misinformation can be harmful. That's something that we'll discuss, inshallah ta'ala. All right, so we move on. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, and this hadith is reported by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. It is obligatory for you to tell the truth, but truth le leads to virtue and virtue leads to paradise. And the man who continues to speak the truth and endeavors to tell the truth is eventually recorded as truthful with Allah. And beware of telling a lie, for the telling of a lie leads to obscenity, leads to sin and that those sins lead to the fire of Jahannam. And the person who keeps telling lies and endeavors to tell a lie is recorded as a liar with Allah. The reason why I wanted to share this hadith with you is to discuss the uh, a fact that as Muslims, this is part of who we are. All right. This is something that is part of our identity, not only in the fact that we the words that we speak and what we write we, it needs to be true. So, for instance, if you go to you go to you go to school and your teacher asks you, have you done the homework? Oh, you know, uh, teacher last night, you know, the our electricity, uh, you know, at our at our home, uh, you know, the whole neighborhood, it was a blackout. And obviously that's not true. Or the famous one, you know, the dog, the dog ate the homework or, you know, the hamster or whatever it might be. So that's not true. You're late for work. You blame it on the traffic. There was no traffic. You just woke up late. So that's for, for us as individuals. But then on another, another perspective, this hadith is also encouragement to make sure that what you share, what you consume, what you share with others is also true and uh, correct in the same way that you would ensure that the, um, when you speak, you are truthful. You'd also want that in the information that you that you that, that you get that you get, and also in the information that you share. And of course, the other thing is that that kind of truthfulness and that attention to detail and attention to accuracy is a reason for going to Jannah, and the opposite is a reason for going to Jahannam, as we will see in other ahadith. Alhamdulillah like this one. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, it is enough of a lie for a man that he narrates everything he hears. Meaning that it is that narrating everything that you hear, everything that comes to you and sharing that with others, it's equivalent to lying. Why? Because your inability to differentiate between the truth of what you are narrating from what is false, means that in, 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 um, inadvertently, you are also a liar. Let me explain this. Someone shares something with you on, 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 on Facebook or on social media. You just share it. You just share it in the group. Or let's use WhatsApp as an example or Telegram. Something, something, someone shares something on WhatsApp and you just share it with the rest of with the, with the, with the groups that you are in. So, But that's true. It's a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. Absolutely true. The Prophet said that. Okay, wonderful, mashallah. Another hadith comes to you from another friend, you also share that in the group. Okay, that hadith is da'if. Another hadith comes to you, you also want to share that with the group. Beautiful hadith you say to yourself, but you don't verify, it's a fabrication. It's a lie, the Prophet never said it. So even though you didn't lie against the Prophet wasallam, the fact that you shared it without verifying it is the same. So the Prophet's equating the fact that a person deliberately lies to a person who doesn't think, make the effort to verify any information. And that's a, serious, that's a serious issue. And think about how guilty we are of this. We just share things. Like, oh, this is nice, I like this, let me share this. Is it true? Well, I mean, we don't even ask that question. Is it true? Like, is, it, is this reliable information? Oh, you know that, yeah, have you heard that, you know, that the vaccines, you know, they cause such and such, they cause uh, infertility. Oh, really? Where did you hear that? Does it matter? Sounds plausible. No, it doesn't work that way. 
sounds plausible, could be right. Oh, you know, but they've also found I mean, there, there have been conspiracies proven in the past. And so this could be you no know, could and would and it should and maybe and po- po- plausibly and possibly and and could be those are not words that should feature heavily in the word in 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 in, in the speech of a Muslim. Allah says the Prophet says you know, they could say they maybe they said Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah says in Kitab al-Um volume three, you know, that kind of of uh, of of accuracy think about just a few things so that we understand the importance of accuracy verification 